Good morning, and welcome to Chapter 8 of Collaborative Statistics. Uh, today we'll be looking at confidence intervals. Now, what is a confidence interval? Good question. It is um, an interval, which means it's a range of values. We have a uh, lower bound and upper bound, and we use that to surround our um, population parameter, either uh, you know sample mean or either population mean or usually population um, probability. And <coughs> sorry, I have a little cough that's been driving me crazy. Um, and we use we do a little calculation on this based upon a sample, and we use that sample to then estimate where we think the um, population value would be. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of terms in here you might want to know. Point estimate is just um, the calculated average or calculated uh, probability that we've been given. Um, so it allows us, that, that's all it is, it's just an estimate of the, popu of the population. When we take our sample, we say we're going to use that as an estimate. Um, Inferential statistics. This is um, wh where we take the statistics values that we do and we estimate based upon those samples. Okay, so that's all we're doing is we're we're inferring some information based upon the data that we've been given. So all up along this time, all we've been doing is just calculating values. Now we're going to use those values to actually come up with some ideas. And so here's some the key things you're going to need to know. The interval is just you're going to have a parentheses and you're going to have the lower value and the upper value. And to find those values, you take the estimate, which is, like I said, the sample mean or sample pro uh, proportion. And you're going to subtract the margin of error and add a margin of error. And I'll show you how we'll sh talk about calculating the margin of error in a minute. Um, the confidence level is a percent. They're going to give you a number and they're going to say we are 95% confident that the boom so or 90% or 82%. It could be any value but it's going to be a percent and so that's our confidence level. And the alpha is um, the probability that this is not so this is an error. This is alpha error. This is the probability that the interval uh, does not actually contain the population. So it's just if we are 95% confident the alpha is 1 minus 95 or point or 5%. Okay, so it's going to be the opposite of our confidence level. <clears throat> and those two numbers are going to be very useful. And so notice here in our graph, we have our confidence level, which is this space that we are saying our, um, the range where we are saying our, uh, we believe the mean or uh, well, the um, value population parameter is. And then we have our alpha. We have our error on either side of it. Okay, and so that's saying, well, we this is the chance that it's outside of that range. Notice here we have our lower bound, which is our x bar, our sample mean minus the error, and here we have our upper bound, which is the x bar plus the error. So to calculate the error bound mean in this case, um, we need our z, which okay, we're going to take from um, remember chapter six. We take our alpha look up our, our value and on our z table we're going to come up with a value for, for this part of it and then multiply it by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Very similar here to our um, stuff we looked at in chapter 7. Uh, so we, we're taking those pieces and now we're kind of squishing them together. And then when we're done we have a, a, basically a statement that says that we estimate that the, with blank confidence that the true population mean or Portion, depending on which one we're doing, um, is between blank and blank, right? And <coughs> so this is kind of like the standard setup that you're going to be you know, doing. You're going to figure out where your errors, what, what your what your um, confidence is. You're going to look at it. You're going to figure out where your what alpha over two is. What is that error that's left? Divided by two. That's what you're going to look up on your z table. You're going to do this, then you're going to come up with this basically this ending sentence. Now, we have some common confidence levels 90, 95, and 99%. Okay, so, and the most common of them is the middle one here, 95%. And remember how we said, you know, 
uh, with the 6895 99.7 with two standard deviations you know is 95 percent it's not it's close it's 1.96 standard deviations so um, this is the number that's going to become very important you know it's close enough to two that we're like all right it's, it's good enough uh, for some things but when we're doing confidence intervals we want to make sure we're, we're accurate enough um, so we do that and notice that as our <coughs> confidence goes up our z value also goes up okay so that's important for the next thing that we're going to look at is how do we affect uh, changes in our confidence levels well if we change the confidence level we get a bigger number so therefore our intervals are farther apart okay because we want to give more space to make sure that we reduce that alpha that error that that could occur so we have we're more confidence the further these numbers are apart from each other as our confidence goes down the intervals get narrower all right the other thing we can do we can affect is change our sample size all right and because we're doing divided by the square root of n that if we have a bigger number we're dividing by a bigger even though it's a square root we're still dividing by a bigger number and when we divide by a bigger number our answer gets smaller so if we have a small sample size our answer is going to be bigger now this here was for knowing the population standard deviation in most cases we don't do that we don't know the population standard deviation so we use this other formula called the student t distribution and this was created um, by somebody who worked for Guinness. Uh, he was testing beer. Yes, yes, statistics is very important in beer. Uh, it's a good thing to know. <coughs> and um, his distributions are fairly similar. Okay, you know it ha it's continuous. Assumes all real numbers. Uh, it has a symmetrical uh, distribution formula around the mean of zero, uh, but it's more spread out and flatter than the normal distribution okay um, because he didn't know the population of deviation he had, it's kind of an estimate so it's a little wider right um, it does approach the normal distribution as n gets larger n is the number of samples um, notice here we in the t distribution we have this thing called degrees of freedom and degrees of freedom are n minus one so as n gets bigger then it approximates, it gets closer and closer to the normal distribution, and we can just, after a point, we can actually use the normal distribution um, if we wanted to. And <coughs> in the old days, in the old books, we actually did that, but now that you have your computers and calculators, um, you can actually calculate the t distribution fairly easily. Um, the error bounds are pretty much still the same. The only difference is now instead of a z distribution, we use a t distribution with alpha over 2. And instead of sigma, we use s. We still have the square root of n, so, and then we're still multiplying this to find our error. And then we add that error and subtract that error from our mean, and we get our interval. Same thing here. Okay. Here are some confidence interval values right, that you would use for the t-distribution. Here's just some. Notice this only goes to 10 degrees of freedom. Um, <coughs> but notice that every one of these is still high. Let's look at the 95%. Remember that value is 1.96. Every one of these is still higher than uh, that 1.96. So we're going to have a larger distribution. If everything else stayed the same. Our interval would be a little bigger because you know, the lowest value we have on here showing is 2.228. So that's still a lot bigger than 1.96. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other confidence interval, we have proportions, because remember we always had means and proportions, and these things follow both of them. The, me, the proportion one uses the z distribution, always. So if you see the proportion, just all you know, you're going to use the z distribution. Uh, if you have a mean, you have to figure out, do I have a, do I know the population of standard deviation or not? And if I don't, then I use the t distribution. If I do, then I use the z. But here, on proportion, you're always going to use the z distribution. <coughs> now, we can only do this if the p prime times n, remember p prime is just our est point estimate of population, so we take our, x, our number of successes divided by our number of uh, events. If that times n is greater than five, as well as our successes, the probability of success times n is greater than five. 
both of those things have to be true. They both have to be greater than 5. If they are, then we can do this estimate. Okay. Otherwise, we can't do it. And we just say, well, we don't have enough information. We have to go do some more um, samples. You know, take some more samples. And that should raise your, your value to you know, above 5. So, but again, we you know, use our Z table. We subtract from the portion point per estimate. And we add to the point estimate. And we get our interval. So the, the, the steps are still the same. It's just that the formula is a little different. That's all. <clears throat> now, if we will go backward, if we know the error, if we want to find the error from the interval, we take our uh, upper value, subtract off the lower value, and that what that will give us is, because both of those have the point estimates in it, they'll subtract off the point estimates, we'll have the error bar bound twice, so we divide by two. <coughs> Just doing a little algebra, all right? We divide by two, that'll give us our error. If we want to find the mean, for our estimates, then we just take the average of the two numbers, and that would give it, because the mean is going to be in the middle of those two, because all we did, we took the mean and subtracted a number and added that same number, so we're, if we divide those, average those two things out, add them up, divide by two, we will get um, the value, because number one is plus m, plus the error, and the other one's minus the error, so when we add them together, the errors cancel out, and we get two times the mean. So we divide by 2, and I'll oh, like this thing. <coughs> and the last thing that we can look at is calculating sample size. So if we are doing a, a mean, we take our z-score that we want, put alpha over 2, so usually it's 1.96, times our standard deviation, population standard deviation that we've been given, divided by uh, the error that we want to show. So we, we have these things, these are the numbers that we're given. We, we can decide all of these things, all right? Um, if we have a, if we're, we usually know the standard deviation, if we're doing S, then we take that as well as the T distribution, so that's the other difference, and we square that value. That will give us how many people we have to find. If we are doing a proportion, we take our uh, Z value, 1.96, divided by our error, Square that and then multiply it by P prime times Q prime. That will give us our sample size that we need to calculate these things out. So this is how we come about these things, you know, come about with these things. And these are very useful. So this is how they can use and to figure out that you know asking fifteen hundred people will give us a enough of a sample size to estimate what the entire population of the United States wants to do. Okay, so and we'll look at that in class. And that's the end. I will see you in class. Bye.